I shall now show you the kit and equipment as worn by a Victorian soldier of the late 1880s of the 1st Middlesex Regiment. Everything he'd wear to go to battle or to carry out his normal daily duties. It's quite an easily worn piece of kit, very comfortable and very easy to put on, as I shall now show you. Private McGrath is here dressed as he would be in normal kit equipment. This is our normal dress when not wearing the leather equipment. You'll see that he is wearing leggings at the base of his trousers to seal off the trousers with the boots so that nothing can get up there. Mud, stones, dirt or insects because we spent a lot of time in climates where that sort of thing would be quite a problem. So Mac, if you get ready please, we'll, you get your epaulettes open. Everything starts with the undoing of the epaulettes because everything is fastened beneath the epaulettes to keep it in place. The first thing that's put on is the haversack. Just a canvas haversack, holds a day's rations. Next to go on is the leather work. Made like a waistcoat, it goes on in one piece. This is put on, as you'll see now, in pairs because it's a lot easier. Slipping the bayonet in first behind there so it isn't in the way. Awkward part to put on. Over the shoulders and under the epaulettes. Assens with one buckle at the front. What you see is the, the haversack with his day's rations, two ammunition pouches. These ammunition pouches would hold four packets of 10 rounds each in each one, the round size being like that. Next to go on is the water bottle. This is the last one of the lot, so that it comes off easily and first to be replenished. Just made of ordinary wood, lined inside with beeswax. Try and make it waterproof. Unfortunately, in the hot climates in which the British soldier served, the beeswax would melt and the water would seep out. This is where the assistance comes in, finding all these straps and the positions for the buttons. That is the kit and equipment placed. All that's left now is his helmet with a strap neatly tucked up out of the way. Quickly put down so that it can be put under the chin and keep the helmet on. And now all he has to do is pick up his rifle and he's ready for battle. If you now turn around on his back, you see a metal tin contained in a coverall. That tin it breaks down into several parts, a bit like today's modern army mess tins, in which he would keep his cleaning implements, his eating implements, and it breaks down into separate parts and he would eat and wash out of that. Underneath he has a rolled up grey coat, blanket or cape, depending on what his choice was at the time. Held onto the waist strap by two straps, with a third strap encompassing the lot and keeping it fastened to the back. One nice big and self-contained unit, easily taken off, easily put back on. Making it quite a solid fixing to the back. And that is the kit and equipment of those days. Nothing fancy, but easy and comfortable to wear all day. Thank you. Good that turn around. The reason it's done in twos is so that one person can check the other over. He would check me. We would both make sure that we were ready. And once we were satisfied, we would fall in with the rest of the troop. 